time for breakfast. So I thought about making something which everybody likes and loves in fact. That's an aloo paratha. So good morning everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to present before you aloo paratha as we make it in our homes. For that what I have done is that basic ingredient I have around 10 big medium sized potatoes or aloos which I have boiled with the cover only in water and I've kept them in a strainer like this because I want the entire water to be out and it shouldn't be soggy and watery therefore now once they are cold they're very hot even now so once they're cold I'll remove the cover or the, I'll peel it off and then start with the recipe. Apart from the aloos or the, or the potatoes, here I have taken atha, uh, flour here, like here I have taken three cups of flour and then of course you can choose refined flour according to what you want, what you like, like in your dish. I will need around some, uh, say a handful of coriander leaves, some chilies according to your taste. I'll need, I have chopped down here some spring onion, very, very small and thinly sliced down because I do not want them sticking on when I'm eating it or when I'm, you know, rolling it out the parantha. So I've made it very, very small there. Apart from that, I have also taken some pieces of uh, ginger that also very thinly, very thinly sliced down. Here I have around three teaspoons of cumin powder and two teaspoons of coriander powder and one teaspoon of red chili powder, Kashmiri red chili powder, just for the color. I have here around two big sized onions, which I have chopped very thinly again, as you can see there. And for a change, I'm going to use some paneer or cottage cheese, say around 50 grams here, which I'll crumble off and then use in my recipe. I also would like to introduce the way my, my son loves it at home, that is with a little bit of cheese, I guess. So I have here one or two or three slices of cheese, which I will use, but not in all the paranthas. So first what I need to do is that I've already boiled my potatoes. They are getting cold. Now what I need to do is that try and knead the atha or the dough for the dough. So here I will use some salt according to my taste. So we need to, however, be careful that we'll also put salt in the mashed potatoes that we will prepare. And with that, I will put in some vegetable oil. But before that, I will just try to mix in everything, the salt and the, the flour. And then slowly, give in a little bit of, say one, two teaspoons of oil there. And try to merge the oil or in fact knead the oil into the, first of all in, into the uh, atta or the flour when it's dry itself so when we are trying to mix together the what uh, the you know in dry when a dry state we are trying to mix together the salt and the little bit of oil that we had put we have to do it for quite some time so i have been doing this for kneading this for almost uh, four or five minutes now it needs to stick on like this when we do it when we try to make it up uh, try to give it a shape inside our you know palm like this so this if this is the way it comes off then it will be very soft and fluffy now is the time when i put in little little lukewarm water and try to knead the do not give the water all together try to knead it in a manner that first of all, slowly, slowly, the, the water needs to get into the, um, the atta or the flour. It shouldn't be done together. I mean, you do, need not put the water together. In fact, should not put the water together. This way, I'll be kneading it till I get a very soft dough. dough because, uh, you know what, when you're talking about alu parandhas, it needs to be very soft. Then only it will spread properly and the mixture will not come out of the parantha. I have been kneading for almost 6-7 minutes now. You can see how soft the dough is. So we will gather it together into a nice little ball there and then keep it covered for some time. Say around 15 minutes is okay. While that's resting, I need to peel off these potatoes and then mash them for that special aloo paranthas. You can see they are steaming still they are out and then I am going to mash them into 
crumbly pieces there i love doing this you can imagine how good it feels it's like almost uh, something that helps you ease of your tension also so this way i am going to mash up all my aloos or my potatoes you can mash it up with your hands and your fork or whatever but we need to get a very nice and crumbly texture there with the potatoes done with this way we will do for all the 10 potatoes medium sized potatoes that I have this is the amount that I've got now I'll also break, break in my uh, the paneer pieces there up the paneer 50 grams of paneer that I am doing it I had it for my put uh, parathas now in between I've already put the flame on fire for my with my karai and I'm going to now fry this up so the karai is already heated up. I'm putting here around uh, two tablespoons of uh, the oil there, any vegetable oil you can choose. And then while it's heating up, we're going to put in uh, the thinly done up onion and let it fry. I normally like the onion a little glistening and a little brownish. So that way, we're going to fry it up. And then I'll also we put in the ginger. Too much of ginger makes the dish a little bitter. That's what people in my house say. So I normally avoid too much of ginger in my in my dishes. I'll also put in the chilies then next. And while that's going up, we just let it fry for some time and fill the kitchen in the air in my kitchen with a beautiful smell of a beautiful Sunday morning which is cooking up aloo paradas. We'll of course not let it burn and put in the spring onions there. Some people have it without frying it but I like that little bit of uh, extra you know to make my Sunday special. So now I'll put in the mixture of the potatoes and the paneer. I normally love the paneer in any of my dishes somehow it's it gives a different flavor to the entire dish because of its own unique flavor so that's that way i'm going to try to mix up everything together and in between i'll put in the spices here these are the all three spices that will go in now spread across the spices there all right and i'll fry it like this continuously stirring so that the mixture is coated with the masala every bit of the mixture is coated with the masala and mashed up we'll put enough salt here we need to remember we did not put salt when we had boiled the potatoes as we normally do and give it a nice mix so that every part of the potato gets a share of the salt all without salt your dish is nothing so that's done up when it starts sticking onto the sides yeah it's done up. so we'll remove it now and put the coriander leaves so that's the steaming aloo paratha mixture ready you can see that just spreading it out so that it doesn't hurt my hands when I'm making it now look at the condition of the dough yes even the next last kneading there so it becomes easier for me to roll out and your parandas will be ready in no time in between I've already put up the karai a tawa on flame so I'll take a bigger dough because I mean ball because I need to put in some aloo inside so take it like this and try to make the sides you know flatter and make a hole in between like this where i need to put in the mixture of the aloo right so normally we try to make the sides taller and put in say one teaspoon of the aloo there and while we're doing it try to fold up the sides so that we can roll it up and the aloo will be inside Normally people talk about the perfect aloo paranthas where we do not have the aloo sticking out. But I love a little bit of aloo sticking out to give the feel of the parantha. That's the perfect ball there. 
Now what we do is that spread some refined flour on the table and then try to slowly roll it out this way. It's all right if you have some of them alu popping out, no problem. It's the taste that matters, of course. So a little bit tells the person who whoever's eating it what's inside. So I guess that's all right. You don't need to make it very very thin, however. This way we roll it out beautifully, and then we have this perfect round. Even if you do not have the perfect round, it's still the tawa is on flame and heated up. So we put the parathas on the dry tawa. Try to flip it over. Yes, we have those little white bubbles up coming up. Right now, it's the time we put in some desi ghee because desi ghee will bring out the actual flavor of the parathas. Indian cooking is never complete without desi ghee. But if you are very very well health conscious, not health, weight conscious, then you need to. You can always choose for or opt out of the desi ghee and choose for the refined or the vegetable but i assure you without the desi ghee the alu parantas are not actual alu parantas that way we have it fluffing up there and we will fry on each side till we get those beautiful golden bubbles up there okay see we have these beautiful golden bubbles there formed with beautiful spots there it's fluffing up and it's preparing itself to be the perfect aloo parada. Okay, so another one out. Okay, so we'll now try to make one for my son who loves cheese. So can I just put the cheese in between, a slice of cheese there and a little bit of the aloo there and make an aloo cheesy paratha for my son. So just let me roll it up and then prepare it in the same manner as we have prepared the other parantas. So roll it up slowly like this and then I can just imagine how wonderful it will be when, I, when, we, when my son eats into it with all the cheesy flavor along with the aloo. So that's the cheesy one cooking up. You can see this white cheese there, melty, right? Okay, right. Now I'll put in a little bit of ghee there for that unique flavor of the ghee. Ghee melting into your paratha. This way. Turn it over, flip it over, and then on the other side as well. A little bit of ghee. So this is like a you know, guilty guilty Sunday I guess but I think I need to, you need to sometimes pamper yourself so, okay so that's it just see if it pops up yes it is popping up a bit press on the sides and we'll have this beautiful hollow coming up in between which shows it's really cooking up see you can see the cheese melt and ooze out there so that is it. This is the actual feeling that you get when you put it inside your mouth and you have the cheese oozing out there. Yes, and those beautiful brown patches or block of beautiful brown stairs of the brown. And the press on the sides so that, so that the sides also cook up and it's done. So we just use a pizza cutter then make it four slices just like we are served in a hotel right and a restaurant and we beautifully decorate it this way right and then serve it here I have used homemade chili you know bujolokia there and some dahi and this is your platter ready to be eaten So we have the cheesy one that's going and then you can see the cheese layers there yes the white one popping out 
and a soft it becomes softer because it's cheesy and then we have our alu parathas ready cheesy alu parantha here so we can serve it also with uh, this is mango pickle with mango pickle it's real wonder when you eat it so now it's ready to be eaten and i hope my family loves it here i have ready before you my sunday breakfast something called alu parantha and a favorite in my house served with dahi sour curd or any pickle of your choice i hope you like this recipe of mine and if you like it go, do give it a thumb, thumbs up and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't thank you so much for watching